Hey everyone, this is Lucy and today we're back with another highly requested video topic which is what to do after getting an AWS certification. Now if you've recently completed an AWS certification then I want to congratulate you on your achievement. Passing these exams take a lot of hard work and dedication and so you should be very proud of yourself. But I get it, you're now sitting there with your shiny new certificate thinking okay what next? How should I use this to land a cloud job? Well you've come to the right place because in this video I'm going to share my advice and tips to help you get the most out of your certification. For those who are new here, my name is Lucy. I'm an ex AWS solutions architect and over the past two years I've studied for and achieved five AWS certifications. On this channel I teach people how they can do the same by providing study roadmaps and career guidance. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel to stay updated. Alright, let's get into it. So AWS certifications like most IT certifications have a bit of a mixed reputation in the tech industry. Some people love them while others think they're a complete waste of time. I sit somewhere in the middle because even though AWS certifications don't teach you everything, they provide you with a structured learning path to learn the fundamentals. Plus, if you add them to your LinkedIn profile, it can help you stand out to potential employers. But are AWS certifications enough to land your cloud job? Not really. The bad news is most certifications won't provide you with a complete understanding of the cloud. This is because the questions in the exams are multiple choice and are based on specific facts and figures that you can just memorize. It doesn't force you to actually get hands-on and learn how to deploy the core AWS services, which is a bit of a problem because those are the skills needed for most technical roles like solutions architects and cloud engineers. And so how do you bridge that gap between certifications and what you need to land a cloud job? The secret lies in these three steps. Step number one, gain some real hands-on experience. Step number two is to get some relevant industry knowledge. And step number three is to network and build your community. By following these three steps, you'll be able to stand out from other job seekers who are also AWS certified. Alright, let's dive deeper and break down these steps one at a time. So the first step after getting an AWS certification is to gain hands-on experience. In your certification study, you might have created an AWS account and played around with some services. But in order to fully understand the AWS services and to get to the level that tech companies are looking for, you'll need to gain some hands-on experience with building architectures and solutions in the cloud. Now there are three main ways to gain this experience. The first one is through guided tutorials. This is a great starting point for beginners and these tutorials provide you with the exact step-by-step -step instructions. For example, this tutorial on how to build a basic web application. You can see that it takes about 35 minutes to complete and can be done for free. If you'd like to check out some of these tutorials, I recommend visiting workshops.aws for a set of over 100 free AWS labs and tutorials. The second way to gain this hands-on experience is through cloud projects. Unlike certifications where you follow exact step-by-step -step instructions, cloud projects allow you to be more creative and build something end-to-end. -end. For example, you can build a 3 t web application on AWS or build a custom chatbot that your friends can talk to. I have a video on my channel where I walk through three beginner-friendly AWS hands-on projects, so make sure you take a look if you're interested. The third way to gain hands-on experience is through freelancing. This is where you can go onto platforms like Fiverr or Upwork to see freelance projects where people may need help on things related to AWS. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, Lucy, I don't have work experience, how can I start freelancing? The good news is, you don't need to have much experience to begin with. You can offer your services at a lower rate and build a portfolio of work as you go along. For example, you can start by helping people with no tech experience host their website on AWS. But yeah, freelance projects can give you a chance to work on real world problems that businesses are facing, which can then help you grow your cloud skills even further. Speaking of building real world experience, the second step after getting an AWS certification is to gain relevant industry knowledge. But let me start by saying this, the names of AWS certifications can often be misleading. Just because an AWS certification is listed as solutions architect, for example, doesn't mean you have to become a solutions architect. These certifications teach you the relevant concepts to become DevOps engineers, solutions architects, cloud engineers, or even software developers. Each of these roles requires specific skills outside of the certification. For example, to become a software developer, you'll need to know how to code. But the core AWS knowledge and services remain the same. And so what I'm trying to say is don't limit yourself to one or two particular roles. Research the different roles out there in the tech and cloud industry before deciding which role you want to aim for. Because trust me, there are so many cool roles where you can use your knowledge of AWS to help others. Another way to help you gain insight into the tech industry is through career mentorship. 
If you're looking for a personal mentor to help you land your dream job, I'd highly recommend checking out Pathrise. Pathrise is a career mentorship program that matches you with a dedicated career mentor to guide you along your job search journey. Their network of mentors help you optimize your resume, help you prepare for interviews, and answer any career-related questions you may have. You can pretty much get unlimited one-on-one -on -one time with an expert in the field you want to get into. They have different industry tracks available, for example, software engineering, data, and IT and cybersecurity. Pathrise has helped thousands of fellow from all sorts of backgrounds land great jobs in tech. And the best part is you don't have to pay anything before you get hired. This means the program is 100% free before you land a job. To get started, head to pathrise.com forward slash tech with Lucy to get matched with a career mentor today. I'll also have a link to this in the description below. Thank you Pathrise for partnering with me on this video. Okay, the third step after getting an AWS certification is to network and build your community. Networking is not only important for helping you land a job, but also having a successful career in tech. To meet people who are also interested in learning AWS, I'd recommend joining a local AWS user group. You can see here that there are more than 400 user groups around the world, including the US, Canada, India, South Africa, and so on. And so definitely check out this website to see if there's a local group near you. By attending some of these events, you'll be able to slowly make new friends and build your network. Another great way to meet people who are working in cloud and IT is through tech conferences. Many of them are free to attend so keep an eye out on those as well. One of my favorite quotes is your network is your net worth. This really emphasizes that networking isn't just something to help you find a job. It can also help you make new friends and build relationships that can provide you with a lifetime of learning and growth. Before we wrap up, there's one more thing I'd like to mention. So I recently started a free email newsletter called cloudbytes.ai where every week I share the latest news and advice on cloud and artificial intelligence. So if you find my videos helpful, you might want to subscribe to the newsletter. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. Please give this video a like if you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.